Okay. So we're back, and now we're gonna go track down two more giant souls. There is a third we could go get, and that is gonna require killing the ancient dragon, which honestly I've never done before. Um, might give it a shot. I don't really host much enmity against the ancient dragon, considering he helps you out. But, uh, yeah. So, we shall see. First one we're gonna wanna go do is close to the pursuer boss fight. forward to fighting Vendrick again, though, to be honest. I just talked about before, and one of the things that I'm disappointed with later boss fights within Dark Souls is that they essentially just become super high one-hit damage things with very little room for error. Vendrick is probably the total embodiment of that, where you might get a very stacked build, might be able to resist a total of one hit from him, but most builds are just going to get one shot if you manage to, to connect that large sword with your head. So it was it's very much like... I guess kind of like Sin, but at the same time it's mainly just... It's a really simple pattern. He's just got a lot of health, which these souls help with. stay in here too long. There are a bunch of items in some of these memories, but we're going to be skipping over quite a few. Some of the story stuff as well. these are some of the soldiers from outside, but they actually have their skin on this time. No, I don't want to return the bonfire. I think this area is totally optional. One of these is hidden, right? Uh, I think this one is actually kind of a trap. There's a spinning blade trap that comes out. Right? Now this one is the trap. There we go. I have no idea if we're gonna actually have enough time for this. Some of the giants in the area are skippable, and really we're just looking for a corpse at the end. Steel set, like that. fire from their face holes. Uh, you'll also find people on the ballistas and knights who are not necessarily openly hostile with you to begin with, but very well could be after having nothing else to fight. Best not to mess with them. Um, let's see. You'll notice they're wearing the same armor as some of the undead that were on the ramparts. 
Which is a very interesting story, story point that you might not get. Don't do this stuff. Is that our guy? That might be. Also got archers here. And giants. That's our guy. Uh, we can actually just leave now if we want. There's a few other things you can drop down and get. Like, I want to say there's pyromancy, maybe a shield. There's a lance here, which is one of the few ones that were just in the base game. Basically, the strength equivalent of a spear. You know, let's just go ahead and get out of here. The last one, last tree memory that we can go to is going to be near Pate. Or where he was. So we gotta collect those items. Oh, I guess the door is closed now. Isn't the tree over there, or am I just crazy? Right here, yeah, okay. There we go. This one is the most gauntlety of the bunch, but also has the most interesting part, which, uh, because I'm a lore hound, we might stick around for. Totally skipped this guy in my first playthrough. Did not notice him in the slightest. What are you doing here? You are not one of our soldiers. And I don't take you for a mercenary. Whoever you are, this is no battle to involve yourself in. Whether you are guided by bravery or brashness. <laughs> this is no place for you. I am Drummond, and the Lord has placed this fort in my hands. Whoever you are, I forgive your trespass, but leave this place immediately. Just mention my name, and no man will challenge your exit. And even if you don't, by now, my men have not the will to resist. Soon, the giants will descend upon this fort. It is revenge for the kingdom's misguided barbarism. The venerable lord built this kingdom to bring prosperity to his subjects. What has transformed him so, I cannot imagine. Long ago, the king crossed the seas, pillaged the land of giants, and brought back a prize. It was then that the golems materialized. The giants are no ordinary barbarians. A singular rage burns within their hearts. My father and his father both fought the giants on this very land. The giants have wills of steel. They cannot find it within themselves to forgive the misdeeds of our lord. Did you see him? That towering monster among them, that is most certainly their king. He will be a thing to topple. <laughs> Even if I should die trying, my blade may break, my arrows fall wide, but my will shall never be broken. Those who live by the sword will die by it, and I, Drummond, won't go down without drawing mine. Take these. I think you may just need them. Don't ask me why. I just do. Be gone with you. This fort will soon fall, be gone, before the giants are entirely upon us. So yeah, that's Drummond. Um, a lot of players get his armor right after the Pursuer fight, very early in the game. wonder what's going to happen to this wall. He 
lays down a bunch of interesting story stuff. That, uh, first of all, the thing that still boggles the most lore hounds for Dark Souls 2, the question is what exactly is the prize, in quotes. Most people think it to be the Throne of Want, which seems about as logical an explanation as any. Why, as to the king goes and gets the throne from the barbarians and from the, the giants, most think it's. I think it's Chandra. It's probably the cause. And it seems to be like a logical reason as to where the quote unquote misguided barbarism source is from. Isn't that like an Essence Flash chart, or am I just crazy? Well, I'm probably about to get smashed to death. Blossom. I believe the Blossom Kite shield is from the contest. How I just made it through that, I do not know. This guy got a few swords in him. I felt like there might have been sublime bone dust or something in one of these memories, but maybe I'm just crazy. Need to fight this guy. Got our soul. We are, we are done. Well, that's cool. Um, Azarius can be repeated at nauseum if you feel like for, I guess, a few more souls, and I think they can be bonfired. Maybe I don't like be crazy. Bonfiring the ancient dragon, I think, is one thing you can definitely do, though. Um, but now. We've got enough now, we're going to be doing half damage to Vendrick, which I think will be enough for my purposes here. Um, that means we've got to go back down to the ditch. Unfortunately, the checkpointing process to get to him is not the best in the world. The important thing is that I just get the bell ringer at the bottom so I don't have to fight those pyromancers. I have no idea if... Okay. You can summon somebody in just for Vendrick. As I don't use more than one, maybe two Estus, I should be fine. doing a very good job of what I just said. Jeez. This is me being too anxious. shield mainly right there that does it. I don't even need to worry about being human form for this. I could take off that ring if I wanted to. I'd like the lightning clutch ring, which I could totally go get now. And Sin's dead. Um, I probably could have gotten it even without Sin being dead. Uh, that would give me, well, I guess, a little more attack power. Here's how we turn Vendrick from being non-hostile to hostile. The trick was, I believe, to stick on his left leg. We 
also not be up against a wall. There we go. See what I was talking about. Spinning to the right. That's that leap back, that's what makes things kind of difficult sometimes. Repositioning, just in general. And now he's too close to a wall. Sometimes I think you can also do a running slash if you get too far away. Yep. the wall again. Come on. Okay, there we go. Ugh, first try. That's nice. Huh, I guess I haven't killed him on the uh, PC version yet. So, that does something else that is, I guess, somewhat interesting. Um, gives you a bunch of souls, first off. That's one thing. Uh, other things that it opens up a door in the Shrine of Amana. I'm trying to remember the fastest way to get to said door. Doesn't mean we are going to have to go through Shrine of Amana again. I think this bonfire will get me close. It's either that or it's from the first. I don't think it's from the first. It's a door off to the left with a bunch of brambles. Okay. There's a 
this point. I'm more afraid of getting invaded than anything. Conceptually, I like the idea of the Ventric fight. It's like, once again, the disappointment of the king. Um, kind of a harken back to Dark Souls, and the fact that we've, or Demon Souls, rather, and we've built up this sort of monolithic character that there's no way he can live up to the legend, and he doesn't. In fact, he's, you've all but just missed him in his prime. The point where he just fights with like a, you know, a mindless automaton. So, that sort of messaging I like thematically. But, once, I, once again, like, mechanically it's not a very deep fight, watching me circle around him. I guess the puzzle of figuring out how to fight him is something. Let's see, where does that lock stack? Okay. I don't think this is what we're looking for. I can't even remember what's in here. Helix Halberd, right? It's a non-scaling weapon with a very... with a... It's a standard move set, but what the animations that the weapon does makes it a little bit different and interesting to use, especially in PvP. Um, let's see. What we are looking for is a cave off to the side with brambles. Uh, this might actually be it right here. Yeah. This doesn't open up until you have taken care of Vendrick. This door won't open. Unless Vendrick is, Vendrick's body is dead. In which case we find a much smaller throne, for whatever reason, along with all the valuables. stuff. Let's look through some of this real quick. Soul of King. Soul of Vendrick, King of Dranglake. The king was wasted away, a shadow of his former self, but still held something dear. Use his soul... Use the soul of he who would link the flame to acquire numerous souls, or to create something of great worth. So, Vendrick's apparent goal was to link the fire again, very similar to the wishes of Gwyn and the gods. Um, whether that meant he was going to burn himself alive or not is sort of beyond me. Um, and then we finally have Vendrick's crown. Crown of Vendrick, King of Dranglick. What makes a king? Some say it is birthright, while others call it destiny. Perhaps it's not important as long as the king's name serves to unite his people. Uh, and so Vendrick's crown is similar to that of the king of Crown of the Sunken King because it increases stats. In this case, it's a little bit of faith and uh, intellect and HP as well. So all the crowns have this sort of stat boosting thing as a, like, an attribute among them. Now we have all four crowns, which I would think of the crowns of the three would be enough, but this should be able to trigger something else from the, the memory of uh, the king himself. So, once again, we're back to the ditch. Which is here. And if we're lucky, we might actually just finish this right here now. There are only two boss fights in it between us and the end of the game. As 
about time to end this series. I got a pyromancer to spawn. Third time's a charm. Me being way too anxious. Deers are so much worse than the swordsman. Look at the music. One day, fire will fade, and dark will become a curse. Men will be free from death, left to wander eternally. Dark will again be ours, and in our true shape, we can bury the false legends of yore. Only, is this our only choice? Seeker of fire, coveter of the throne. Seek strength. Okay. The rest will follow. So does this actually end up changing the description on the crowns or what? Those are the three original crowns plus Vendrick's crown. Crowns are all still by the same namesake. I ended up looking this one up just because I wanted to be sure about what the effect ended up being, so it's not as obvious as you can tell, but wearing any of these crowns, and I believe, prevents it so that, well, maybe at best just a show. Let's pick one. Which one would be most beneficial for my playstyle? Probably the crown of the Sunken King, more than anything. Strength up, dex up. Things down the equip load, endurance. So do that. And take that off. Hmm. This, of course, is going to bring down. There we go. Kind of matches too. Let's see if I can invest some Titanite. So, I believe if I've gotten this straight, this makes me invincible, right? Not quite.
wearing any of these crowns basically gives me an infinite ring of life protection, for lack of a better explanation. Uh, do we have any rings that we can fill in now with the last slot? Ring of the Embedded. Gives me a bunch more equip load. Also gives me more attack. And that the ring of the embedded basically inversely increases statistics. The higher statistic is, the less it's going to get a gain, but it also does a very small amount of an attack boost as well. So I think that's what we're going to go with. Um, oh, but it looks like it did eat all those souls. Hmm. So I don't have to worry about hollowing, but I do have to worry about my souls dropping. So I kind of want to get those back. Well, finding out a little bit of the intricacies of the crown itself. I wonder what that does mean for leaving a sign down. Nice armor. This one might go long. I might just split this video in half. We'll see. It's because I'm on such a roll right now. So one more time with the Sin Knights, but... <laughs> so... Lots of implications behind this. First off, there is the supposed thought that Vendrick did find a cure for undeath. In some way, shape, or form, it is in fact internal, eternal life. Or immortality. Which, in some ways, is kind of the same thing, but... Unlike, for example, Lucatiel of Mira's case, we seem to regain things that make us human. One would assume thoughts, memories, that sort of thing. Which, you know, in her case, would have been as much of a cure as she would probably have needed. Another way of interpreting it is that it is not really a cure for undeath at all, only sort of a surface level thing. We're still breaking the cycle of life and death by having humans remain. The other notion behind it is that while there is a cure for the dark sign, it is restricted to one person and one person only. So in that manner, it's almost a false cure of sorts. We can get around the dark sign, but only one person at a time can. Which, once again, may speak to the strength of King Vendrick to be able to die and come back over and over again without consequence. There is the read as well. This is all surface level from what I've been looking at. You know, Vati's video for putting up lore or EMB or any German spy or anybody else who likes to talk about Dark Souls. Um, haven't covered this yet for story speculation. Bearer of until. Okay. So we are fine in terms of statistics. Let's just pump the rest into strength. Because I want to do more damage. If I do come back to this character, I have more soul vessels that I can respect my guy to, but for now it's just like, let's spend some souls, let's pump some stats, and let's, I guess, buff the hell out of this crown. This is the old Iron King's crown? This one restores spell use every 30 seconds or something like that. So, you know, maybe it might end up working out with being a lot of really low... Like, low number of cast spells to try it out. I believe these take Twinkling Titanite, so... I'll be around. I could probably get more from her if I wanted to, but this... This should be fine. For now, let's finish this up. 
need to go back to Drang Lake Castle. And cutting the Chandra off from whatever her dastardly plan is, as soon as I can remember how to get there. King's Gate. only problem with what I'm about to do is that this is actually a two-phase fight now. You can go to this fight early in the room to get the first part. Where is my king's ring? Um, warrior, seal, king's ring. Ivory. We need to get blades plus one back on. Uh, instead, this is going to be a back to back fight. But one other thing that I believe I read up on this. Uh, boon of Vendrick, that is what I think what people are calling. I believe it also prevents you from getting cursed, which, when we get to Nashandra, is actually a large part of her fight. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. But for now, we have to worry about the Throne Watchers in front of the Throne of Wands, which makes me believe there are some ties between the Ivory King and the Golems more than the Throne itself. What the Throne of Want is is still largely unknown to people. I like Vingral a lot, but I gotta go with Bernhardt. But now, theoretically, I should be able to get back casts of Sunlight Blade. And once again, we get a duo fight. Wow! Let's just get messed up. This one, though, is from the World of Warcraft School of Learning, and it's sort of a Romulo and Julianne from Karazhan fight, where if these two don't die very quickly within other, then they will revive each other. So in this case, we need to deal more damage to the defender. I have no idea if Suzaku sticks around, though, for the next fight or not. I'm gonna find out, though. Grave undead. You have proven yourself to me. Now, be one with the dog. So here are the 
curse orbs, which... Okay, I am getting... I'm getting the curse animation, but I'm not getting a cursed bar. So that's kind of... <laughs> wow. Oh, wait, no, I'm getting my health drained instead. Weird. wasn't exactly the hardest boss to begin with. It's a weird love child of Nito and something. But now it's just sort of like trivial. That's Dark Souls 2. Real quick. We'll trigger the cinematic. If we're lucky. Soul of Nishandra, Queen of Drang Lake. Nishandra was born of the dark with an insatiable lust for strength. Special soul of this prisoner of desire. Here we have the kiln. Once the fire is linked, souls will flourish anew, and all of this will play out again. It is your choice to embrace or renounce this. Great Sovereign, take your throne. What lies ahead, only you can see.
and that's our ending, which, you know, there's no real way to affect the way that you've had in other Souls games of getting multiple endings from perspective, so... Um, what the Throne of Want is exactly is still sort of a mystery to most of the, I believe, all of the Souls community now. Um, and what that means there seems to be linking the fire again the same way that the gods do, but still, it's very much left up in the air exactly what that ending <laughs> means. Um, and unfortunately, I don't feel like the DLC really answered those questions unless I've completely overlooked some stuff, which is completely possible. Still, Dark Souls is probably one of Dark Souls 2, at least, is probably one of my favorite games that have come out in the year of 2014. Uh, all the DLC was, I think, was pretty great. Um, enjoyed playing through them a bunch. I'm glad I waited around and had a guy to go, you know, <laughs> ready to go through them fresh, more or less. Um, yeah. And this is my first Let's Play I think I've done to completion, so there's that. Uh, I haven't gotten that many views right now. I'm hoping maybe sometime in the future this might be, make some good retrospective stuff. But, uh, yeah. It, uh, just going through over such a long period of time. I think this started back up in, like, May or something. Uh, wait, was it, wait, yeah, I think it was May. Um... Yeah, it's something. But, uh, poll to win co dot ltv. That's all I got to say. So I think I will just let the, uh, credits run, and then... Cut this off, I guess. Uh, there's still more things left in Dark Souls 2. I didn't cover everything, like... The, uh... Covenant of the Dark there. There's a few other bosses, like Royal Rat Covenant, Ra Royal K Rat Authority, black. And still more story ties, I'm sure, to be discovered, so, you know, if you haven't played Dark Souls 2, definitely give it a shot if you're a fan of the Soul series, and Bloodborne still scheduled to be out in February. Um, looks like to be the next bite for Souls fans that are looking for something to play, and Miyazaki being back on the helm for that. Uh, looks to be fantastic. So. Yeah, that's about all I got. Um, if you watch through all of them um, at some point, you know, I'd say thank you very much. Um, I hope to have more Let's Plays up in the future. Yeah, that's all I got.